Is it time to throw in the towel, change directions, scrap your current business model and go in a whole new direction? Or do you just need to double down and have patience? One of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur is the uncertainty. And in this episode of Build Your Tribe, I'm going to help you walk through a process to figure it out. Like what is the next best step for you, your business, and your brand? So let's get to it. Hey, thanks for joining me. My name is Shaleen Johnson, co-host of Build Your Tribe. Thanks so much for being here today. This is a really important conversation, especially for entrepreneurs, because so often we've been conditioned to believe that we can't quit. It is because of your tenacity, your determination, your belief in yourself that you are in the place that you're at. Like we're known to be risk takers. And oftentimes that can be confusing when we're looking at what feels like signs and signals, yet in the back of our mind, we also might be hearing, well, yeah, but if you quit, you'll you'll never have that comeback story. You could quit too soon. If you change directions now, you could lose momentum. Like all of these things where you just wish you had a crystal ball so you knew what the right decision was. And I'm here to tell you, there is no way to know with 100% certainty what the next right step is. But with all things, if you walk through the decision process slowly, and with a strategic process in place that I'm going to share with you today, you're going to make a much more informed decision. I always take a big sip of water just so I have enough energy and the enthusiasm to beg for a sub. Like, I would love it if you subbed to this channel. Brock and I post up episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. We spend a lot of time doing that. It's free. So think of subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell. It's like, it's like giving us a tip. It's like saying, hey, thanks, I appreciate you. It doesn't cost you anything, and we certainly do appreciate it. It helps push these episodes out into the algorithm. All right, enough begging. Back to the heart of the matter. First, I don't want you to think of pivoting as quitting. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. So your business, your brand, your journey is always going to take different twists and turns. The tighter we hold on to one specific outcome I think the the riskier that is. I, th I think that we put ourselves in a position where we we put blinders on and we don't want to see or hear some of the warning signs that are sometimes out there. However, I also have encountered, even just this week, uh, one of my clients, a, a student who, frankly, pivots every single year and not in a little way, in a big way. And I'm trying to figure out how much of this is just a self-sabotaging mentality or fear. Either way, with this strategic process, I think you're going to make a much better, a much more informed decision. I'm going to share with you seven different principles to help you decide if, in fact, it's time to make that change. The first of which is to ask yourself if growth right now is stagnant or declining in your business. Now, you can look specifically at your business, but I also think it's important to look at the industry, the people who are doing what you do. Look at that and don't allow fear like, okay, we were once making this much money or we once had this amount of growth or holding on to a time in the past where you were making a lot more money or the business was much more successful. Don't allow that to dictate what the future looks like. You really do have to look at things objectively and say to yourself like, okay, are things generally declining for everybody, not just us? Or is it just us? Because if it's just you, it might be a matter of changing shifting your business model. Number two, a decline in customer demand. Now, I know this might seem very similar to number one, but it's, it's different actually because, well, I'm going to give you an analogy. When I was doing fitness infomercials, when those launched back in like 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, like back in the days of P90X, do you remember P90X? When that aired on TV, you when you purchased it, it came to you via DVD. You got DVDs of the workout. You know what didn't exist at that time? YouTube. The package of DVDs was sold for, I think it was like $200. And today, that same type of infomercial, not exactly that same infomercial, but that same type of programming, like a, a, a workout program on infomercial is sold for free. You literally, companies can no longer charge $200. Why? Because there's so much more supply. There's so much more free supply i.e. YouTube and all the other apps, all the other competitors that drove the pricing and the model all the way down. And then so many people got iPhones and, and they're on YouTube and Instagram and 
TikTok and, and they're creating all their own videos and they're doing this for free. And, and so there's so much availability out there and so many other people who are quote unquote fitness experts that it really decreased customer demand. Number three, a shift in the market. This is a little bit more complex than both those first two, but they're again, awfully related. When I say a shift in the market, like a shift in the way people either want that particular item or a shift in the way that your competitors are delivering it. Like there's a, sh let me give you some examples. That's always easier to understand. In 2022, when ChatGPT and other AI platforms started to be accessible to people like myself, entrepreneurs, it, it changed the market. It definitely changed the market for a lot of copywriters. It changed the market for freelancers and consultants. Does that mean that if I were a copywriter, for example, who was writing blogs and at a certain point I was able to charge, you know, the peak price point, right? Um, does that mean that I just have to double down and keep charging that peak price point? No, for me, it would be a shift in my business model. I would realize that, okay, ChatGPT can't replace me. In fact, I can use ChatGPT to get more output to my clients and in essence, I just have to shift my business model, I have to maybe shift the way that I charge, shift the way that I'm operating my business because of this shift in the market. Sometimes there's a shift in the market because your consumer is no longer interested or they've aged out of something. For example, I think about the fact that my, my parents live in a senior community called the Villages and they're, they're boomers. That age group loves that like in, you know, everybody lives in one small community. Everyone's the same age, all these different activities. I don't think that my generation is going to be into that. I just don't. I could be wrong, but that's a shift in the market mentality. That's a shift in the consumer mentality. Another example of a shift in the marketplace and the consumer interest. I keep using these fitness examples, but remember when cycling studios were the hottest thing or little tiny boxing studios, like all these specialty fitness studios. And that was really, really popular. Oh gosh, all the way up until about COVID. I think just before COVID, it was starting to lose popularity. But for a while there, people would spend, and, and listen, I'm not saying that people still won't spend that, but there's definitely been a shift in the marketplace, which is why you've seen so many small boutique gyms go out of business. But there was a period at which the peak had happened and people were you know, happy to pay $50 for a single class. Now, I think that because the economy is starting to shift, that has created a change in the way that consumers are spending their disposable income. And for $50 a month, they can get a big box gym where they can take that yoga class, where they can also lift weights, where they can also have childcare. So it's looking at like what's happening in the marketplace and knowing that that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to jump out, but do you have sustainability? Are you still at the top? And what changes or tweaks do you need to make to sustain that success? The number four thing I think you need to evaluate is your personal level of exhaustion or energy, if you will. If your mental health, if your physical health is being compromised by the toll your business is taking on you, that's a really big one that you need to evaluate. I am not a fan of anyone trying to push through burnout. So does that mean you need to quit? It might mean you just take a break done that ourselves. There was a time when we were launching a new program, it was called Phase It Up. And in order to do that, in order to keep myself in a healthy space, I had to take a break from another one of our businesses. That was smart success. And in doing so, it gave me the bandwidth mentally, physically, emotionally to be able to launch a startup. Now, does that mean I can never go back to smart success? No, we didn't sell it, but we did put it on the back burner. We did put it on hiatus. We did put it on pause. And you have to have faith that that's more important than the money, right? Like, cause we could have kept doing that. We could have kept offering smart success, but at what cost? Speaking of cost, number five is evaluating costs and margins. Do you see that the margins are decreasing? Maybe you find that with all of these incredible free tools online, it's, it's easier than ever for you to, to operate and manage your business, but the consumer threshold for your price point continues to drop. If that's the case and your margins are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you, you got to look at that and ask yourself, is this an ongoing trend? Are we going to continue to trend downward? Number six is evaluating your passion for it. Do you still love what you do or does it feel like a chore? 
Do you absolutely hate it? <laughs> Do you feel like what was once like your dream come true, your passion, your purpose, does it now feel like a job? If that's the case, this might be a good time to pivot. And number seven, and I think this is one that's really important, and it is this, check in with key people. And oftentimes, the people that we forget to check in with are our team members. We don't want them to know that we're even questioning the future of our business. And I think that's a mistake. I think that our smartest, I, I know for, this is true for me, the smartest, wisest, most caring, thoughtful people are the people on my team. They know the business. They oftentimes see things that they, they maybe they didn't feel like they had permission to tell you what they thought you should be doing or how the business could change or pivot. Or maybe they're seeing what your competitor's doing and you've been so busy in your business that you haven't had time to look around and notice other things that are happening. Oftentimes the people that work for us, the people that work with us, you know, they don't want to offend you. They, they don't want to tell you what maybe is obvious to them and they think it's obvious to you, but it's not. Sometimes we're like way too close to it. I think it's also very important to check in with wise mentors and advisors. If you don't have those people in your circle, hire somebody. I mean, you can hire a business coach just for a month to evaluate, help you evaluate what you need to do next. Talk to your business partners, talk to your life partners, talk to people whose opinion you really value. And especially those other entrepreneurs who they've got vision for the future. They've probably built other businesses. And if you don't have a community of entrepreneurs around you, that is why you've got to be, you've got to plug yourself into a community. And this is not a, well, I guess it is. This is me talking about the amazing community that we have with the Marketing Impact Academy. And I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm just telling you that when you are a part of a community, you have access to other entrepreneurs that you just don't otherwise have the ability to get people's opinion in your real life. You know what I mean? Like not all of your friends do what you do. When you are a part of a community, and I hope you are in one, um, it's just so powerful to get people's perspective who aren't in your industry, who can look at things from a distance and see things perhaps that you're too close to see. Those are your seven strategic steps, but I, I do want you to also consider how often our sunk, like have you heard of the sunk cost fallacy? The sunk cost fallacy refers to a psychological condition, like a, it's a thought process wherein we aren't willing to give up or quit on something because we've been doing it for so long or because we've already spent so much money on it. And a great example of this is when my husband and I thought that we wanted to launch a an app for one of our programs. And I, I could ask him right now, but I think we spent, hang on. Hey, Brett, how much money did we spend on the um, app before we pulled the plug? In total. $200,000. We had invested over $200,000. And then we went through this exact process, the one that I've just shared with you. And it was very clear to us, we this is exhausting. I don't have any purpose for it. I'm looking at the changes in the market. Like all of everything pointed to the word, okay, it's time to pivot. It's time to just walk away from this. What held us there a little bit longer than what we needed to was the sunk cost fallacy. Our belief that, gosh, we've spent so much time and so much money doing this. Should we hold on a little bit longer? And I'm here to tell you, we made a difficult decision, but it was the right decision. Recognizing when it's time to make a pivot doesn't necessarily mean a complete exit like I just shared with you. Sometimes it just means making a change to your business model, the way that you're and what you're offering to your clients and how you're charging them and, and what the customer experience looks like. So remember, like, don't be quick. Don't be quick to quit, but don't be stubborn to pivot. I hope this episode of Build Your Tribe has been helpful to you. If it has, I would love to have you take a moment and double check and make sure that you're subscribed. Please click the like button and let us know what you thought about this episode. And lastly, you'll notice that I pinned a comment about the pivot below this video and I would love to get your intake. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. It was my goal to be brief, to be bright, to make it fun and then be done. We're done. I'll see you soon.